Good morning, everybody. Uh, today I have come up with lecture number forty, and in this lecture uh, we will discuss Gamow's theory of alpha decay. So, in the last class, in the last lecture, we talked about uh, the alpha decay, and what is that alpha decay? Is that a nucleus uh, from a nucleus, an unstable nucleus, a helium nucleus comes out, so that this unstable nucleus becomes stable so when it emits a helium nucleus so this x becomes y with four number of nucleons less and two number of protons less that means two number of neutrons less and two number of protons less with the helium and an amount of energy q and the amount of energy q varies from 4 to 10 mega electron volt for alpha decay and we also saw that how half-life changes with a change of energy. So this thing we already discussed. We saw that the half-life of uh, the nucleus varies from 10 to the 17 seconds to 10 to the minus 7 seconds. That means when you have an amount of energy which is released, it's about 4 mega electron volt in that reaction, in this reaction. So the half-life is 10 to the 17 seconds. Whereas when uh, you have uh, uh, an amount of energy which is released in this reaction is about 10 mega electron volt, the half life is 10 to the power minus 7 second. Alright, so there is a huge difference between half life with only a small difference of energy which is released. If you have a difference of energy which is 6 mega electron volt, then you have this much of difference in half life. Now, why this happened is uh, explained with the help of, can be explained with the help of Gamow's theory of alpha decay. So, according to this Gamow's theory, uh, what they suggest, what Gamow suggested is that uh, from a nucleus, you have this nucleus, the alpha or the helium nucleus or the alpha particle is preformed. So it, it forms inside the nucleus and then it comes out. And it comes out very easily when energy released in this reaction is 10 MeV. However, it does not come out very easily because half-life is 10 to the 17 seconds when its energy releases 4 mega electron volt. So that's what we need to address here. So according to Gomo, that the helium nucleus is pre preformed inside the original nucleus, that means nucleus X. So it is preformed and then it comes out from the uh, X nucleus and X becomes Y and then. So therefore, uh, but then there's a problem with it. What is the problem is that, so let me write the reaction again. So X, you have A number of nucleons, Z protons, then you have Y, so A minus 4, Z minus 4, plus helium nucleus with 4 nucleons, 2 protons, and an amount of energy Q. Now, uh, you see, when, so this is your X. And when the helium nucleus, nucleus is preformed, it has to come out. Now, when helium nucleus is within this nuclear radius of X or nuclear diameter of X, so it is under nuclear force. So nuclear force will try to hold it inside it. However, it has an energy which is about again I'm writing four to ten mega electron volt, and since and most of the energy is carried out by the alpha particle as we saw in the last lecture. So 98% almost energy is carried out. And we are taking if energy released in this reaction is 10 MeV. So 10 MeV energy is carried out by helium nucleus or alpha particle. So alpha particle will have a kinetic energy of 10 MeV if energy released in this reaction is 10 MeV. But then it is, uh, so there we can come up. But when the alpha particle just crosses this nuclear barrier, that means this nuclear radius, there will be a strong repulsive force. 
Why do you have a strong repulsive force? Because it will now become Y, X will now become Y, and you have helium for here. So X will become Y, so there will be positive, positive Coulombic repulsion. So when the helium nucleus is within the nu nucleus X, there is a strong nuclear force, and when it is just outside the nucleus X, and then in that process X becomes Y, there is a strong repulsive force. So there are therefore two forces which will uh, come into play in this picture. So those forces, we can draw it uh, graphically like this. So you have this potential energy V in this direction, and here you have the distance R. R. So when the helium nucleus is within uh, the nucleus X, because it is free from, it is under the action of nuclear force, and we know the nuclear force is a strong attractive force. So this side type of potential we used to have uh, for uh, depicting nuclear potential. And after that, when it reaches R0, R0 is the boundary of that nucleus. R0 is the boundary of that nucleus. So there is a strong repulsive force between Y and helium because both are positively charged. So there will be a strong repulsive force. Once the helium gets out of nuclear radius or nuclear diameter, so repulsive force will come into play. Now we need to look at what should be the what is the amount of repulsive force uh, that acts between Y and helium. So of course it will depend on the, what type of X you have and what type of Y that is in form. Uh, so therefore we would like to estimate the repulsive force between Y and helium because when it just comes out there will be a repulsive force. So this is your Y, this is your alpha particle. So there is a repulsive force between Y and alpha. Alright? So therefore if you want to do that, uh, so we would like to uh, uh, find out the repulsive force or repulsive potential in fact and that potential can be estimated to be or the repulsive potential or repulsive can be estimated to be K Q1 Q2 by R. So this will be the uh, repulsive potential between Y and helium when helium just goes outside the nuclear radius or nuclear diameter. So you have K, K is nothing but 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q1 is the charge of this. So this is basically Z minus, sorry this is 2, not 4. Z minus 2. Charge of helium 2 into Z and divided by R. R. Okay. So if you consider a uranium U235 nucleus. Uranium 235, where you have 92 protons, and if you replace the values here in R, you take it in femtometers. So, if you replace the value of 92, then 2z, and of course, e squared, you have e squared, which is electronic charge, q1, z minus 2 protons here, then 2z protons here, and then e squared divided by R will give you the repulsive potential. Or uh, if you want to find out the force, then it will be simply R square. Alright? Now, when you take uranium 235, this repulsive potential comes out to be nearly, comes out to be 26 mega electron. Alright? For uranium 235, the repulsive potential between Y and helium comes out to be, uh, you can do that if you replace the values of Z. Then E, then R, which is which is to be taken in femtometers. So the repulsive potential comes out to be 26 mega electron volt. Now that means if you want to draw the potential graph, it will be something like this. And it is one over R dependence. So therefore, so this is your V, so it will come, come it will be something like this, and it is 1 by R dependence. And so this is the repulsive potential when the alpha particle is just outside the nuclear diameter, it is just outside the nucleus. 
So its value is almost equal to 26 mega electron volt. And if you want to represent the Q value, that means the energy that is with helium nucleus or that is with alpha particle is almost about 4 to 10 mega electron volt. So it will be much smaller than 26 mega electron volt. So if you take the Q value, so Q value will be somewhere here. So this is your Q value, somewhere here. So this is 1 by R dependence. So Q value will be somewhere here because Q value is 4 to 10 mega electron volt, whereas repulsive potential is 26 mega electron volt at the boundary, at the interface. So Q value will be much smaller than uh, 26 MeV because it is uh, 4 to 10 mega electron volt. So it is below 26 MeV. Now when you look at this figure or when you look at this diagram, what we observe is that uh, you see, this is the value of energy for so this is 4 to 10 mega electron volt, or we are taking okay, leave it. So, what is the value of 4 to 10 MeV? Q value of what? Alpha particle. Now, Q value has suppose you have 5 mega electron volt, now it is 26 mega electron volt. That means the helium nucleus or the alpha particle has to come over, has to overcome this repulsive potential. Then only it will come to this region. Otherwise, it cannot come to this region. Alright? And classically, it is not possible. So classically, if you have an energy of 5 mega electron volt, but the barrier you have is 26 mega electron volt, you cannot cross it. Alright? You cannot cross it classically. Because I am coming with an energy of 5 mega electron volt or 10 mega electron volt whereas the barrier, potential barrier is 26 mega electron volt I cannot cross that so if I want to cross this barrier 26 MeV mega electron volt classically I should have an energy, kinetic energy which means the helium part or alpha particles should have a kinetic energy should have a kinetic energy of around either equal to or better than 26 MeV volt and mega electron volt. But this alpha particle has an energy of 4 to 10 mega electron volt only. So classically it is not possible and classically therefore it is not possible. You cannot explain classically how alpha particle comes out of certain nucleus because of this restriction. However, quantum mechanically it is possible. So quantum mechanically how it is possible? So quantum mechanically suppose you have a barrier and barrier is suppose it's V0 and you have a particle which has an energy E and T e is less than V0. Classically you cannot cross this barrier but quantum mechanically so there is a probability because quantum mechanically it deals with matter wave. So it is basically a wave it is a wave and it can penetrate through this barrier and there is a finite probability that you will have this particle or there is a probability that you can find a particle beyond this barrier. Quantum mechanically it is possible but classically it is not possible it cannot cross over this barrier. But quantum mechanically there is a final probability that this particle even though this particle has energy less than the potential barrier it can tunnel through this potential barrier. So therefore there is a finite probability that this alpha particle will have some probability according to quantum mechanics that it can exist in this region. So therefore we would like to find out the probability of alpha particle being tunneled. Uh, to this. So therefore we will consider two regions, three regions in fact. So this is your region 2, this is your region 1 and this is your region 3. So our concern is region 2. Why are concern is region 2? Because this alpha particle, this alpha particle cannot come to region 2 classically because it has a higher potential barrier than its kinetic energy. So therefore not possible. So therefore region 2 is forbidden for alpha particle. Since region 2 is forbidden for alpha particle means this is your nuclear radius. So it cannot come out of that nucleus. But quantum mechanically it is possible. So therefore we will see, we will try to see how quantum mechanically and what is the probability that this alpha particle can come out of the nuclear radius? So to do that, uh, okay, let me draw the figure. 
Tiga empat lagi. So this is your region one, and this is the energy of alpha particle Q. So this is my region two, and once it crosses region two, so it can move very easily in region two because in region three. The energy of alpha particle is greater than the potential barrier due to Coulomb potential or Coulomb repulsion. Now, uh, let us try to see quantum mechanically uh, the probability of tunneling, the probability of the alpha particle being in region two. So to do, so to do that, uh, we will solve the time independent Schrodinger equation in region. And let us take this potential to be V C. This is the Coulomb potential between Y and helium nucleus. So the time independent Schrödinger equation is H cross square by twice m d two psi in region two d r two plus V psi is equal to E psi. Or we can write it this way: d two psi d r two is equal to minus. Uh, Or twice m by h cross square e minus v into psi. So in region two, or in fact in this equation, e is equal to q. So the total energy is q, and v is equal to v c. The potential is the Coulomb uh, potential. So therefore, uh, in region two, therefore. In region two, therefore, this Schrödinger equation becomes d two psi t r two, which is equal to twice m by h cross square e e is q minus v c into psi. So you have know, here so you have v minus q here will be v minus q v minus e. So V is your V C P C and E is your Q in region. Q is the energy of the alpha particle and V is the uh, Coulomb potential between alpha particle and uh, Y nucleus. So to solve it, what we would like to do is the uh, two side. D R two is equal to k square psi. So where k square is equal to, we will take k square equal to twice m V C minus Q divided by h cross square. All right, k square is this quantity. So k square is this quantity. Uh, this one is. Now this is my harmonic equation. So the solution will be: we have been doing it so far uh, too many times. Many times we have solved this equation. So the solution is: psi is equal to a e to the power k r plus b e to the power minus k r. Now this is the solution. And if you apply <coughs> boundary condition, so. Uh, we can omit this term because this term will represent the wave function. Uh, we did it though, but so this is your psi, this is your r. You have this term exponentially increasing. So this is e to the power kr, and if you draw it, e to the power minus kr. So e to the power kr will eventually mean that psi, as you go on increasing r. Psi will go on increasing, which is not correct. If you look at this diagram, which is not correct. So as you go further away from uh, the nucleus, you will get, you will have more probability to find out the alpha particle, which is not correct. But this is correct. As you go away from the helium nucleus, the probability of finding the alpha particle will be less. So therefore, this is not correct. So therefore, the solution uh, will be having only e to the power minus k r term. So therefore, the solution is solution this side which means b e to the power minus k. 
So this is the solution uh, uh, of the Schrodinger equation or the value of wave function in region two. So you are getting some sort of wave function. So you are having a wave function in region two. That means if you have a wave function, that means the wave exists. And if the wave exists, that means the particle exists. And the particle in this case is alpha particle. And the probability can be written as, as you know, probability, or this is also called transmission probability, is psi squared. So we will write it some constant, suppose b squared is d, e to the power minus 2k r. Alright? So this is given a probability to find the alpha particle in region 2. So you are getting a finite value of psi, finite value of probability. That means even though Vc is higher than Q, there is a chance that you will always find you will find the alpha particle in this region. So that's what that is why the quantum mechanically this tunneling, this is tunneling probability. This tunneling is possible, and uh, but classically it is not possible. All right. So this is one of the successes of quantum mechanics as stated. So therefore, this is the probability to find out the alpha particle in region two, even though V C is higher than Q. Now, what do you understand by this? What do you understand by this? So we would like to draw one more graph, uh, and the graph is between. Suppose you have the psi square. And this side, and this side you have r. And in fact, this psi square depends on k. And we know k is equal to how much? Uh, k is equal to under root twice m v c minus q divided by h cross square. All right. Now this p depends on k, and k and k value is this. Now when v c or when q is smaller, pretty smaller. When q is pretty smaller, how this size square will vary? The size square will vary something like this, right? But when <coughs> q is comparable to vc, then how size square varies? The size square varies something like this, right? Size square varies like this. That means. Uh, when you have Q value, which is comparable to VC, that is Q value is larger, then you will have more probability. So the probability efficient is more, the probability of finding the alpha particle in region 2 is more, because this gives you the probability. However, when Q value is smaller, that is smaller, then the probability drops out like this. But here, if you look at this point, so the probability of finding the alpha particle in region 2 is very less. However, when Q is comparable to VC or Q is large, at this point, if you compare this, the probability of finding the alpha particle in region 2 is very also increased. So therefore, so therefore, uh, we get a graph of this sort, as I told you, and again I am drawing it, that this side you have Q value in MEV. So this is 4, this is 6, this is 8, and this is 10. And this side you have half-life, t half, and it varies like this. And this value is almost equal to 10 over 17 second, and this value is 10 over minus 7 second. second. Alright? So when q value is smaller, the probability of finding the alpha particle in region 2 is very small. And since the probability is very small, the half-life is very large. Alright, so half life is very large. It means uh, and half life from this graph. So this q depends on what it's. You can also write the probability is d half. Alright, because probability depends on q. Why? So probability is d e to the power minus two k r. So probability depends on q. K k depends on Q. So therefore, Q depends on 1 by T half, and therefore P proportional to 1 by T half. So therefore, 
when you have two values smaller, around 4 MeV, the probability of finding alpha particle in the uh, region 2 is very less. So therefore, half-life is very large. So half-life is very big. However, when Q is larger, when Q is almost 10 MeV, the half-life is very smaller. And that means the probability of locating or finding the particle in region 2 is larger. Alright? So that is how it is possible to explain the uh, emission of alpha particle uh, from a given nucleus even though classically uh, the emission of alpha particle is forbidden. However, quantum mechanics allows us to uh, find the alpha particle even though the potential value is larger uh, to come to region 2 through a process called tunneling. And with this, uh, this is called the, the Gomos theory of alpha decay. So next time, uh, we will talk about uh, the beta decay. Thank you very much.